Well, folks, do we have an unboxing or what? What's up, guys? BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them, all for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Uh, now, there's an episode where I buy comics, right? But I also I do omnibus overviews. Uh, regular single issue overviews and reviews and all that type of stuff. So if you're interested in that type of content, hit the subscribe button, then hit that bell icon so that you're notified when I post new videos. Um, by the way, shout out to the Premiere Squad who is watching this video in amazement. I see. <laughs> so, all right. I told you guys, I told you guys last month that the January Omnibus Hall was going to be the biggest Omnibus Hall on this channel all year. So don't get your hopes up. Don't think I'm going to like add a bunch of stuff. It's not going to happen. I didn't lie, but, but February is going to be a very close second, man. And it's only because I got an opportunity to get some books that I thought I was never going to get. So in this video, we got three Wales, three books, three omnibus that are out of print that have been going for ridiculous prices on the secondary market and that I got all for cover price or below. So I'm super excited and we got a lot to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and just grab what we got here. Whale number one. Let's grab this whale and let's see what's inside. Now, each of these books came from a Facebook group. Uh, I believe one came or two come, came from the Omnibus Collectors group and one came from the Geminites Facebook group. Uh, but either way, the fact that I got all three of these books within like a week and a half of each other is mind blowing to me. Uh, and it all started off with this one. This is whale number one. When you see this book, you're gonna be excited just like I am. Let me go ahead and quit playing with you and cut into this book, this box. Shout out to the packaging. So, um, yeah, funny story. Well, I'll tell you the story of this book after I get into the box open. Oh, man. I wonder if you guys can guess what books there are. I want to know, like, if you're, if you're watching the premiere right now, I want you to put in the chat what you think the books in these boxes are. I just want to see what your guesses are. The only clue I'm giving you is that they are out of print omnibus. Man, I've wanted this book for so long. And now I have it. I have it. It's mine. Whew. Amazing packaging. Shout out to uh, Rob. Rob sold me this one, and he sold me one more that's on the list. So shout out to you, Rob. Great job. All right. Suspense. Suspense no longer. This is the Gotham Central Omnibus by Ed, Ed Brubaker, Greg Rucka, Michael Lark, Stefano Gaudiano, and Kano. I've never read this book before. This is one of those books where I actually, there was a copy of this omnibus sitting on the shelf at my local comic shop, Ultimate Comics Raleigh, forever. But I wasn't buying omnibus back then. I wasn't into them. And um, I didn't know anything about it. I had heard that Gotham Central was a book about the Gotham Police Department, and it doesn't feature Batman. And that's all I'd really heard. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting, but I want to I want to see Batman because I was newer to comics and I hadn't read a lot of stories, period, just yet. And then the book went out of print. And then all of a sudden, everybody was just talking about how amazing the book was and how this was the best run. And it was one of the best stories and how it sets up so much about Gotham and how the city of Gotham works. And I was like, OK, I got to get one. And so I, I go on eBay and start searching and they're going for like $200, $300, $170. And this book originally had a cover price of $99.99. Um, so yeah. And so I saw somebody on Facebook. It was actually uh, this guy. It was Rob. And he's like, hey, 
I'm trading my Gotham Central Omnibus. I want something cooler. And I was like, I don't have anything to trade, but let me know if you want to sell it. And he's like, oh, I'm good now. I'm cool on that. I don't want to trade. I don't want to sell it. I just want to trade for something. Well, I guess no one hit him up on his trade. So he hit me up a week later. He's like, hey, you still want to buy that Gotham Central Omnibus? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I do. So thank you so much, Rob. Uh, thank you for giving me a fair price. First of all, I'm going to open this up and just show you something. I have never seen a DC Omnibus with an eye like this. There is zero gutter loss in this book. That's amazing. And I cannot wait to read this. Um, but anyway, we'll get to the other books and then I'll probably give you guys overviews of them. So let's uh, put this down. And uh, here we got whale number two. Uh, where can I set this? There. Whew. All right. So let's get inside whale number two. And whale number two comes from the same seller. It comes from Rob. So shout out to you, Rob. Now this one, this one's actually not as much of a whale anymore. But I'll tell you why in a second. First, let's open it up. So, the great thing about being an omnibus collector is you get all these boxes in the mail, and if it's time to sell something, you got plenty of materials. So, <laughs> I think somebody said in a group, we've all been reusing the same in stock trades box. I can't confirm or deny that. All right, and here's another whale, another book. Currently out of print and highly sought after that I've been wanting for a very long time. And that is the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus by Brian Michael Bendis with art by Mark Bagley. This collects uh, Ultimate Spider-Man numbers, one issues, one through 39 and the half issue. Super excited to have this book. Um, now, as I film this, it was just announced, like just announced yesterday, <laughs> that Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus is getting a reprint. So thankfully, I only paid cover price, which was $99.99 for this. Um, I'm glad I didn't get beat over the head. I'm glad I didn't pay those crazy secondary prices because I would have been very upset when that announcement was made. And I'm probably going to buy the uh second printing anyway just because this book is a little older um as far as i can tell there's no damage to it the pages are all still intact the spines all intact i cannot wait to read this this was one of those stories that people told me to get into but it was like i've already missed out these book these books this run Ultimate Spider-Man started in 2000, right? I got into comics in 2019. Oh yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to buy another copy of this. Um, there's, this is, I don't think this is any fault of the seller. It's just the way the book is put together. Um, it's like, it's like it's subject to damage. So, um, it's in great condition considering the fact that it's been out for like eight years, but, um, yeah, the new printing will be well worth it. But yeah, so that was the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus. I had been wanting that book forever. And I had a feeling it was going to be reprinted because they also just announced a reprint of the Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane Omnibus and the David Michelini Omnibus or whatever. They've, they've been announcing a bunch of Spider-Man Omnibus reprints this year. And I was like, I feel like they've got to reprint Ultimate Spider-Man eventually. But I was like, well, $100 is a great price. I'll go ahead and buy it. And then a week later, <laughs> the box was sitting there waiting for me to unbox. And I was like, dang, man, they're reprinting this book. Um, but again, it's not a big deal. Um, and it's, I think it's going to have a cover price of $100 again this time around. So I'll let you know how to order that. Um, just uh, stay tuned for all that. I'm going to do a video soon about like you know where to buy comics. And we'll talk about that then. Uh, but this last book, this one, I assume is going to get a reprint eventually, but it's a DC omnibus, and you just never know with DC books. This one is The Whale 
of Wales. This one is the book that I never thought I would get. I didn't even know if I'd be interested in it, to be honest with you. But let's crack it open and see what we got. I'm so hyped. I'm so excited. Now, it'd be, it'd be a shame if I open this box and, like, the book is trashed. But uh, the homie Doug wouldn't do that to me. I think your name is Doug that's, that sold me this book. All right. Ah, yeah, see. These packing materials are A1. A1. Steak sauce, baby. Uh, so. And this book is super, super bubble wrapped. book is wrapped so tightly I've been waiting for this moment in all my life hola this book is still sealed guys and I got this for cover price like that's such a win that is such a win anyways bang bang this is the death and return of Superman Omnibus by a whole bunch of people collecting a whole bunch of issues still sealed in the plastic. This is the newest printing, the third printing of the death and return of Superman Omnibus. This one features that pretty, that really cool fold out page where Lois is holding Superman's dead body. Oh, the epic event that shocked a nation and changed Superman forever. This was killing superheroes back when superheroes didn't die all the time it was epic it was epic allegedly it's got a cover price of 150 bucks i paid 150 bucks for it i think that's fair considering it was brand new this book is out of print i have seen this book i've got i've had an ebay alert set for this book for like a month at least and every day somebody is listing this book for $200, $250, $300. I saw a listing for this book this morning for $389. Now, like, there's no way somebody's paying $389 for this book. But that's what happens when these omnibus go out of print, especially with the way DC's been going, like with all the crazy announcements and people getting fired, you just don't know what's going on with DC. So my advice, as far as reprints and buying uh, books that are out of print, if it's a Marvel book and it's been out of print for a while, you'd probably be okay to hold off because they've been reprinting almost everything, it seems. All the all the in-demand stuff, all the X-Men omnibus that I wanted when I was getting into comics, they've all been reprinted at this point. And even new stuff has been solicited. The Spider-Man omnibus has been reprinted. But I've never seen a DC omnibus reprinted. So... Not to say it doesn't happen. I mean, like I said, this is the third printing of this book. But the way things are going, you have you don't know if DC is going to be doing collected editions like this on this scale um, anytime soon. So if you want a book, you see it at a reasonable price, I say get it. Um, and this, this was a no-brainer. You guys know I'm not even a Superman fan, but this book eluded me for so long. Like, the more I saw it, the more I wanted it. This is the definition of FOMO. I just didn't want to be the one guy that couldn't get this book that wanted it. And it made me want it more and more and more. Like Joe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Death and Return of Superman Omnibus. I don't know when it's going to get read because um, I'm not a huge Superman fan. But I've heard that this event got a lot of people into Superman. And the reign of the Superman is in there. The Return of Superman is in there. We got Steel and Cyborg Superman and Superboy. There's a bunch that happens in this Omnibus. And I've seen animated adaptations of it that are like, okay, I can get with that. So I actually am excited to read this book, even though I don't know when it's going to be. So uh, let's do this. I'm going to break for a second. I need to get some food. And then I'm going to come back and show you all of these books. All right, guys. <laughs> now that I've eaten, uh, we can take a look at these Omnibus. Uh, so again, these out-of-print whales, I am so 
so grateful to have these in my hands for the prices that I've paid. Like, that's amazing. So first up, we got the Gotham Central Omnibus by Ed Brubaker, Greg Rucka, Michael Lark, Stefano Gaudiano, and Kano. I don't know if he's just got the one name going on, like Beyonce or what. But uh, I mean, so this dust jacket's got like a little bit of a, I don't know, like a little, you can't even, you can't even see it on camera, but I can see it. But anyway, not a big deal. Let's get this dust jacket off. All right. So before we look at the artwork, let's talk about what this is about. It says, on the freak beat in Gotham, every cop works in the shadow of the bat. It's the most notoriously crime-infested city in America, home to scores of ordinary crooks, as well as many of that special class of criminal, that special class of criminals known as supervillains. Psychopathic, homicidal, and frequently superpowered, these freaks make being an ordinary police officer in Gotham City one of the toughest and most dangerous jobs around. On top of that, Gotham's finest are also stuck cleaning up after a certain cowed vigilante that refuses to play by the rules. As the Cape Crusader fights his one-man war on crime, the members of the GCPD Major Crimes Unit are also working around the clock to save the city. But unlike the bat they occasionally summon, they have to work within the law. So this is a superhero noir meets modern police procedural. The Gotham Central collects our omnibus collects all 40 issues of the award-winning series by Ed Brubaker and Greg Rucka and artists Michael Lark, Stefano Gaudiano, and Kano. With an introduction by author Dwayne Swierczynski. I don't know if, if Swierczynski is like, like Duke is Shusevsky somehow. But anyway, love that cover. Love a lot of this. This is clearly an older omnibus because DC was... You know, I don't even know if you can tell, but there you go. So you see the little embossed Gotham Central there. Uh, same on the spine, nothing special. So let's open this. I love that the hardcover is like not trying to close on me. Gotham Central Omnibus. And it's laying flat enough. I'm just excited that this book is in my hands. Um, so here we go. I mean, I love it. This just looks like straight up police. I feel like the art matches what you hear, like crime noir. Oh, look, here's an appearance from the Batman. I hear those are few, few and far between in this run. And I got to make this quick. Oh, there's Robin and Killer Croc. I love this art style. This art style, from what they describe in the story, or about the story, this art style seems to really, really match up. It just makes you want to read it. Um, I know I did the Moon Knight omnibus not long ago, and it was the same there. Like, I just want to read this book because the art seems like it adds so much to the story. You know what this reminds me of? This art reminds me of Nick Darrington, um, who did The Last Batman. He had a run on Doom Patrol. Um, yeah, Nick Darrington, Batman Universe with Brian Michael Bendis, all that. Um, by the way, this book is staying open pretty well. Um, I'm about a third of the way through. But yeah, the art and the colors, I love it. It just, I know like the description says noir, but that's that's really what you get from this. Um, so that's very cool. Look at the Mad Hatter. So I just love the premise. Like, because we all know that like Gotham City is like the worst city in the world, right? But it's like, okay, well, Gotham has police department. And of course, in Batman, we see Jim Gordon, Harvey Bullock. Sometimes we see Renee Montoya. But it's like, what in the world are the police doing half the time? Like, are they buffoons? Or are they all corrupt? Do they care? How are they doing their jobs? So, obviously, Renee Montoya 
get some spotlight in this book. Uh, here's the Batman. And there's Catwoman. But yeah, so I just love the premise of if there was if Gotham was a real city, what would the police be like from day to day? How would that job go? How in the world do you protect and serve when there's a Batman running around and when there's a Joker running around? So I love that. Well, that's a very cool image of Poison Ivy there. Yeah, this art does not take a step down ever. I mean, here we are near the end. Look at the Teen Titans here. Very cool appearances there. I'm skipping around so that I don't spoil things for myself, so. There we go. Let's see if we get any um, extras back here. And it looks like that's a no. Oh, wait. Here we go. Got figure studies. Character designs. Cool stuff. Not a, So not a whole lot of extras. About five pages. But that's enough for me. Alright. So let's set this one off to the side. So let's set this one off to the side and we'll get into the ultimate Spider-Man. Boom. So here we go. Bang, bang. Uh, ultimate Spider-Man volume one written by Brian Michael Bendis art by Mark Bagley. When I told my friends who were already into comic books that I plan to get into comic books and I was like, Hey, where do I start? And they were like, yeah, start with the ultimate universe. Ultimate Spider-Man is great. But it was like, where in the world am I going to get a million issues of Ultimate Spider-Man? So I haven't read any of this yet. I've read like I've read issue one because I've got there's been a couple of reprints of issue one. Um, so I got a free comic book day issue or something. But anyway, this I'm excited about. I thought they would never reprint this omnibus. And so I went ahead and pulled the trigger in a Facebook group and they uh, they went ahead and reprinted it. So super excited. Let's get this dust jacket off. I love this red hardcover. I'm sure that's not going to be a thing next time. But it's like the red fake leather look. Like, that's pretty cool. It's clearly a sign of the times, but whatever. Look at that Mark Bagley Spider-Man. Uh, let's see, when was this printed? 2012. Manufactured in March 2012. So, this book is old. This book's... I'm definitely upgrading this. I mean, it's in good shape, but it's already a 10 year old book basically. So so we're going through this artwork. Obviously like the ultimate Spider-Man retelling, you know, a lot of the seminal moments in Spider-Man's life. From the very beginning, from the spider bite to, you know, a lot of the stuff that you saw in the Spider-Man movie. I remember this scene where Spider-Man goes to wrestle a guy um, and then somehow does not prevent Uncle Ben's death. Like, all of that. I remember all of that from that first Sam Raimi movie. Um, of course. Um, Green Goblin. Wow, so it seems like they took a lot of that from this um but what i love is just the art like my thing is spider-man should always look cool i don't care like who's drawing him what he's got going on when he's in that suit he should be in some of the craziest poses he should like just he should look like no one else and i feel like mark bagley does that very well probably the most definitive spider-man artist I guess Todd McFarlane probably comes in second in that conversation just because Mark Bagley spent so much more time on the character. I think they did like a hundred issues of this run. Um, Mark Bagley and Brian Bendis, that is, which made them 
the longest running uh, duo, artist and writer team. They, had, they gave them the longest run on a single book by a single artist with a single write, or writer, yeah. Uh, so, not that anyone needed that bit of comic trivia. What I will say is this book's definitely got an eye. Like, it's definitely... Like, you can see that. <laughs> like, I just... I worry that because it's so old, it's gonna, like, pop open on me or whatever. And, you know, maybe that's not anything to be worried about, but I've never had an Omnibus that's this old. Every Omnibus that I've ever bought, almost, has been brand new, uh, with very few exceptions. Is that Craven? There's the Craven. So, yeah. Um, Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1, I hope. And because of this reprint, I think there's a good chance they were finally going to get a Volume 2 for the first time, because they printed this and nothing else. So I hope that the Omnibus sells well. I, like I said, I'm going to upgrade my copy, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be upgrading theirs, just because this book is so old anyway. But yeah, I'm going to upgrade my copy, doing my part to make sure this book sells out. So we get a volume two, a volume three, a volume four, and then I guess after that would be like that Death of Spider-Man reprint or whatever. Spoilers. Um, and then we get the Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man. Which, I've got that. I've got one of those. But yeah. So. So yeah, this looks really cool. I really... I cannot overstate how much I like this book. And how long I have been wanting it to be in my possession. Like... Uh, anyway. Let's see if there's any extras in the back of this one. This is a lot of issues. There's 40 issues of the comic book. Well, 39 and a half. There's the half. Um, yeah, so we got some variant covers. That's cool. A sketchbook. Synopsis. Plot outlines. Pencils by Mark Bagley here. Just cool stuff. Cool stuff. Like I said, this book is in good shape. So shout out to Rob for selling me this one in good shape. Um, but we already know the new printing is going to be even better because it's new and it's Marvel. Marvel doesn't skimp like some other companies that we know. Brand Eck. <laughs> I say that, but I'm a huge DC fan. I'm probably a bigger DC fan than I am a Marvel fan, so that's that's great. All right, and the one we've been waiting for. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so here, here is the moment we've been waiting for. This is the Death and Return of Superman Omnibus, uh, written by Dan Jurgens and a million other people. Look at that spine. This is just a beautiful dust jacket. Honestly, the second printing and this printing, uh, the third, there's not that much different from them. They collect pretty much the same contents, except that fold-out page. But this dust jacket is just so much better. It's so much better, if you've ever seen the original. Um, or, you know, whatever. That cover right there, that flag, is just dope. So... I've never done this before. I've never ended a video on a cliffhanger, but we're going to do that today. So, obviously, this book is still sealed, still in the plastic, and I'm like, yo, like, oh, man, I, I feel like some trepidation there. I feel some hesitation. I don't know if I want to crack this open just yet, especially knowing I'm not going to open it for a little while. Who knows? Funds might get low, and I, I, may, I may need to use this to pay off college or something. I don't know. Um, so, here's what we're going to do. So Superman died in issue 75, right? So if we get 75 likes, 75 thumbs up on this video, I'll crack this out of the plastic and do a separate overview just for you guys. So um, who knows? Maybe you weren't even watching for this long and so you didn't even hear this. But uh, if you did, there's your challenge. 75 likes and I'll crack this open out of the plastic. Uh, but yeah, so 
Very cool. I, overall, I'm very excited about this haul. I mean, three huge whales. Well, two and a half uh, because they're reprinting that Ultimate Spider-Man. But Gotham Central and the Death of Superman all in one week like this. I'm I'm so excited to have these books in my possession. So that's going to do it for today's video. Today's unboxing. Um, if you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up. Um, unless you just don't want to see me open this Superman, which is totally fine with me. Um, but yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I hope you saw something you liked in this video. If not, that's cool. You know, I always tell you, you can always buy what you like. Make sure you read what you buy and be nice to others because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.